The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hello and welcome back to The Ben Heck Show. So what are we hacking today, Ben? Well, a few months ago, a guy named John Prove emailed me and asked, hey, would you like to check out our PyTop DIY laptop kit? Ooh, I love DIY. Yeah, it's based off the Raspberry Pi 2 and it contains everything you need in this kit to make a laptop. Screen, keyboard, battery, case, and all the cabling. All right, so everything you need for a basic laptop. Yeah, um, I figured we could also see if there's anything we could add on, bed and heck style, once we put it together, but I figured it'd be a cool thing to do for this episode. Cool. Let's get started. Amazing hacks. How can we make this portable? Inspired designs. I am the internet troll. Regrettable acting. Bad damn hatches! Each week, Element 14's The Ben Heck Show brings you innovative projects using electronics, engineering, and more. Okay, Felix and I are going to take a look at this pie top kit and then put it together. Are you ready, Felix? Yeah, let's All see right. what's inside here. We can do an unboxing, right? Mm. Well, the um, quality of the cardboard appears to be quite reasonable. Instruction manual. Oh, we shouldn't read that yet. Oh, a screen. Oh, there's something here too. Mm. Oh, it's all green, huh? This screen looks like uh, the same screen for the Novena. Very Let's similar. Let's compare them. Oh yeah. The, I mean, the connector on the end is a little different. Well, actually, no, not that much different. Let's take a look. Quite similar. Yeah, look at that. It's the same pitch and everything. Nice. I mean, if it's the same size, it's probably the same resolution. Yeah, Here, put it end to end, you know, like that. Yeah, that looks identical. Hmm. Mm. It looks like this is one unit. All right, what's in here? Oh, a bunch mm, of cables. Wires. All right. Screws. You probably need those. Oh, yeah, this is pretty nice. Hub Mark One. Mm. Oh, this probably is some sort of uh, HDMI to LVDS converter for the uh -huh. screen. 18 volts, three amps. Okay. This has a rechargeable battery in it too, right? Yeah, I think so. Hmm, I wonder if that's where the battery goes. What do you think? Yeah. <laughs> what you got there, Felix? Looks like... Uh... That goes up right here in the upper left? Mm-hmm. All right. Yep, and then you go... Got the plastic around it, see, so it doesn't short out the contacts mm -hmm. when you lock it in place. Very nice. Oh, you can even see the see the four channels coming from the HDMI. Mm -hmm. It's pretty obvious. Yeah. So this screen is a dual link, which means it's eight channel LVDS. So what this board does is it takes the HDMI signals from the Pi and converts them into direct drive signals for the LCD. And this must also be the charging circuit as well. It's got the battery input here, large inductor, and you know. According to this symbol, that's definitely what it does. Oh, look, huh, there's a connector yeah. there. All right, see this thing? That's so the uh, surface mount vacuum can pick it up and place it. Mm -hmm. Can you see how that's a surface mount? Wireless adapter. Oh, SD card. This must have the OS on it already. That's gonna be a Pi, I assume. There it is. Number two. This seems kind of thick to fit in a laptop, doesn't it? All right, what else we got? It's Oh, okay, there is some thickness hey. to it here. Oh, this is. Oh, this must be the battery pack. It feels kind of cool. heavy. Okay, we found the battery packs. There are four 3.7 volt lithium ion batteries, 3,900 milliamp hours each. That's pretty stout. Yeah, this should go for quite a while. And uh, this is the charging circuit here. And I noticed, see it sinks to this. Mm -hmm. See the heat sink pads? Yeah. So we better make sure we put this on tight. It's actually comparable to what a modern laptop would have, actually. I assume that goes, what do you think? You think that goes there? Quite likely. Is this, are these two slits some sort of rail? It looks like they match up pretty well. See that? Mm -hmm. Oh, you know what Maybe I bet you, you do put, is you remove the back yeah. of it to get the screws. Yeah. Wait, isn't there supposed to be a keyboard with this thing? Whoa. Oh, there it is. Okay, let's make sure that we've completely taken, oh, there's more. What is this? Oh, it's some sort of a uh, piece of plastic cut with a laser. Oh, that would go on here. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, I get it. That's pretty cool. Hey, this kind of reminds me of that Novena thing we're working on, you know? It's meant to be- uh, Very much so. Hacked and opened. All right, now that we've unboxed it, we're going to assemble it. Okay, it says to start with the LCD adapter. You know, I haven't bought any eggnog and rum yet. I'm a real Grinch. You're a mean one, Mr. Grinch. You really are the worst. <laughs> it was Boris Karloff that narrated that, you know? Hmm. Frankenstein. Frankenstein's monster. It says that we're supposed to actually have the pie kind of 
inside of it, so not right up to this edge. Mm -hmm. I think so the dongles don't stick out the end. So like this, not like that. What the, where the heck, what that is goes, this for? Okay, let's hook up the HDMI first. Oh, this is kind of cool. Oh, they made their own cables. Impressive. <sighs> Most impressive. No, that's adequate. I'm sorry, you can't be in our movie. Why not? Well, your name is Chris. We just have too many Chris's. I will not answer the call and then answer the call. Yeah. Of course. I wonder if this is supposed to cram in here. Well, I'm doing it anyway. Yeah, it fits. Yeah, it looks right. Yeah, obviously it was bland. Okay, what's next? Now the keyboard. All right, oh, let's get the dongle in place. This is the Wi-Fi, I assume? Mm -hmm. All right. So cable management there it is. is important on this, apparently. We're good to go now? Yeah. All right. And there's no bend Snap there. it in place again. <laughs> One, 1,002, there it goes. Whoa, Pie Top. Pie Top is now booting. You know, at first glance, the quality of the screen doesn't look as good as the one that we're using for the Novena. I guess we'll see once there's actually some text on the screen. I noticed that with the Chromebooks when I was looking at Chromebooks for Christmas. They're really cheap ones. They don't have a very good contrast ratio on the screen. That's how you save the money. Is there a mouse? Oh, there we Welcome go. Welcome to the world of Pie Top. Select keyboard layout. Well, America, of course. I, I said that already. Come on. Oh, see, like it, it just got big. Oh, because that's the one you selected. Let's try guest mode. Oh, no, it has Minecraft built into it. Well, obviously we have to play that. Sweet, come on. It's a Raspberry Pi. Just be patient. <laughs> Ashwarge for 800, Alex. What we're doing next is Felix is going to manually figure out the pinout on this expansion header since we can't find the information online. While he does that, I'm going to prep a dev board that will plug into the expansion header, making it easier for people to experiment with the pie top. So at the time of this filming, the pie top isn't officially released yet. No, they're just taking pre-orders right now. Okay, uh, that's probably why we had some trouble finding all the documentation that we needed online. For instance, this is a expansion charge board here. It doesn't have a pinout for the port, so we actually had to reverse engineer it ourselves to make our own expansion port. Which is pretty awesome. I assume that they're gonna release things like this in the future for people to add things on. Probably. All right, so this board that we made, it fits in here. And what it does is it gives you a few more things to do as far as input output with the Raspberry Pi. I mean, as far as the development uh, platform for kids, I mean, I have to say uh, Chromebooks are awesome in this price range, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, like, oh, I bought one for my mom for Christmas. I think it was like 250. Yeah. So, I mean, if you're just talking about strictly programming, I'm not sure if something like this can necessarily compete. So being able to interact at a low level with the real world is the key. So you definitely need some sort of expansion here. Right. So what I added was a real-time clock. This is an integrated circuit that's on the I squared C bus, which the Raspberry Pi has. That's so it can keep time. Um, the Raspberry Pi, unlike your computer, or your tablet, or your phone, doesn't have a real-time clock because, well, they cost money. And of course the Raspberry Pi is meant to be as affordable as possible. Um, this is an EEPROM. I just added it because I could, again, on the I squared C bus. Um, you remember how many devices you can have on the I squared C bus? No, I don't. It's 128, because it's a seven bit address. Uh -huh. Yeah, although that's just the theoretical total. Okay. I mean, you might have ones with conflicting addresses, so you can't put them on the same bus, but okay. we put, you know, two on here at least. Uh, then we have uh, a red, green, and blue LEDs here just for blinking, you know, I.O. from the GPIO. Sure. And finally, I added uh, an Arduino, basically, down here. And I was kind of inspired by things like the GERT board and the Chip Kit Pi. These are development boards that allow you to use your Raspberry Pi to program separate microcontrollers. So, I don't know. These products exist, so I assume people like to do that. So that's yeah. something I put into our little board. So first thing I'm going to do in order to get the AVR dude installed onto the Pi Top is I'll add the Adafruit repository, 
with this instruction here. Curl, blah, 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 blah. Add a fruit, add pseudo bash. Oh, that doesn't look as cool with the font all huge like this. But anyway, you can see it though, at least. So it's adding all these, a list of all these uh, packages in the repository. This is riveting. Okay, so now that the repository has been appropriately added, I will do sudo apt-get update. Once this is complete, I will do sudo apt-get install AVR dude. So this is AVR dude version 6.1. Now that I have the, uh, the board in there, I can query the chip. I already wrote a script for that, which is sudo AVR dude P, which tells it the chip AT mega 32 8p and then c which is a configuration file that i set up which i should probably elaborate on and then dash c is pi1 which is the configuration in that file dash v for tell me something oh you can't really see it very well with this huge font but this puts out all kinds of information about the uh the chip that's connected in order to set up this the avr dude i had to edit this con configuration file and it'd go all the way to the bottom of the config file. And at the very end, which is a long ways down here. Okay, so at the very end of the file, I had to put in this that I've just highlighted here. It's a configuration that says which pins on the atmel is connected to the Raspberry Pi and how, where to program it. And then I have a hex file right here, the 328 bootloader hex. It's just a simple blink script. And uh, we'll write that. This is the process of programming the chip. I'll also show a little bit of setup for the real-time clock. In order to get the real-time clock running, we needed to first get on the board, but then do some software magic. So we had to mod probe the real-time clock, well, RTC DS1307. So that's the module that runs when the kernel, when the operating system starts and it gets loaded into the kernel. This is what we do to set that up. And if you want to go into great deal t detail with this, go to the Adafruit uh, tutorial. I'm just going to briefly cover it. And to make that permanent, we edit the etc modules file and we put the real time clock module in there. And also we have to enable I squared C. Once we have that set, we can plug in the real time clock and then type uh, sudo I2C detect dash y1 and we're using y1 because it's the uh, Raspberry Pi 2 and it'll give us output of connected I, I squared C devices in this 50 right here that is the real-time clock and if we unplug it you can see and run the instruction again you'll see that it's not connected so Ben, it looks like you and Felix have finished the Pi Top builds, and it looks like you have mostly the original kit finished, but what's this add-on you've got going on over here? Well, this is meant for educational purposes and getting people excited about programming. However, there weren't any official add-ons on their website, so we created our own. This is a board that plugs into the expansion port, which has been duplicated over here on the left. So it's a little different than the standard Raspberry Pi. We have a few things on it. We have a real-time clock so that you can see the time. Let me see if I can query it here. There we go. There's an Arduino. So if you want to program a microcontroller with the Raspberry Pi, you can. And there's an EEPROM for storing, you know, extra data and just learning about the I squared C bus. Plus some LEDs so the kids can blink the LEDs like, oh look, I did something. Uh, yeah, I think what could really set this apart from just your standard, you know, low end laptop is having real world connectivity and functionality. And the Raspberry Pi is great for that. So I hope to see more add-on kits for this in the future. Well, and I've dealt with kids before and one of the things they love the most is taking things apart. So I think just having that slide out panel where you can see all of the circuits, circuits inside mm -hmm. is something that would really appeal to kids just to be able to see the insides of it. Yeah, and actually once you put it together, it snaps together. So it's not a big deal to actually take it apart. So you can let another kid put it back together again. That's fantastic. It's like, you know, repeating the assembly process, yeah. which is not always that easy with things. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So overall, one thumb up, two thumbs up? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. I mean, I really haven't seen a lot of Raspberry Pi full laptop kits like this before. So I think it's a cool product. It makes it easy for people to make a DIY laptop, which we've certainly seen is something people are interested in. Have you ever created your own custom computer using a Raspberry Pi? What add-ons would you like to see us make on the Pi Top in the future? Let us know in the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash TBHS. Where you can also read about our upcoming episodes, builds, and special events. We'll see you next time.
on a <laughs> Wait, you can also read about it. Maybe she be like, <laughs> Chris Pine. Chris Evans. Jesus, there are a lot of Chris's. Chris Christopherson. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's a hunk. Christopher Columbus. Christopher Lee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> The Ben Heck Show is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com.